Oh, hi there. How are you today? Do you like uh, the view from my room? Just uh, ducked over to China on the weekend, uh, and I'm currently staying at the Great Wall. So I'll be doing my lesson from here. And as you may have guessed, we're starting a new unit, and it's all about traditional stories. And the ones we're looking at today are from China. So, uh, yes, they eased travel restrictions just for Mr. G. Isn't that nice? Okay, we'll have a couple of things in front of us. We'll have the lesson plan that looks like this. You'll have an e-book that looks like this. And you will have a sheet called a Chinese traditional story that looks like this. So just a few updates on everything, basically. The Queensland government announced over the weekend that schools are looking like they'll be open on from week six, which is which is fantastic news. It'll be great to it'll be great to be great to go back. So we'll continue learning at home or learning online or, or coming to school if you're an essential worker. And we'll continue that for the next three weeks. And then from week six onwards we'll just try and catch everyone up as best we can um, on what we need to get done. And then um, before we know it, it'll be term two holidays. And um, I think the most exciting part about these announcements that are being made is it sounds like the worst of it is about over. So that's really good news. So we're starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel. And I tell you what, we'll come back to school in week six as completely different people. We'll have a, a range of different skills. So let's jump in. We, we are starting a new unit, and of course, I want to make it clear that while you are learning from home, everything that you are learning from home, you will not be assessed on, okay? None of that will go to your grade. So I really want to make that clear. The only thing that you will be assessed on are things that you've done at school, whether it be last term or whether it be in the future when you come back. Those are the only things we will assess you on. We will not assess you, we will not, you know, have you come back and, and hit you with a, a recipe assessment, okay? We're not going to do that. So we've basically done all our work on recipes. The next couple of lessons on recipes were one week on an assessment practice and the next week was going to be assessment. So we're not doing any of that. So that's why we're jumping into this nice little unit about traditional stories. So I'm going to walk you through this lesson plan and then I'm going to get you to do sheet four. So generally up here, this, is, this stuff here is, is the Walt and the Wolf, basically. Well, it's the Walt. So it tells us what we're going to be learning about. So we're going to learn to understand how to identify characteristical, characteristic sorry, features in traditional stories that meet the purpose in the audience. We're also going to understand how to compare the characteristic features of traditional stories. So we're going to look at the different components of traditional stories. So you may have looked at traditional stories in the past. As Australians, we are actually very close neighbours with Asia, aren't we? We're right on Asia's doorstep. So it's important that we learn about the area that is close to us. And in particular, Indonesia is very close to us, probably one of the closest countries to us. Um, also China, Korea, Japan, they're all... They're all very close to us. They're actually closer to us than Britain, Great Britain and America. So I want you to just have a think. I just want you to pause the video and have a think about different folk tales, fairy tales, fables, myths, legends that you know or have read. Off you go. <clears throat> 
So a big one, for example, that just came to my mind straight away was um, the Lord of the Rings, uh, the Hobbits, um, you know, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, uh, Three Little Pigs, those sorts of things. So we have a concept of what traditional stories or fables or fairy tales are. We're looking at how <clears throat> how they are in um, in Chinese culture. So we're going to go straight to the ebook, which I've got open here. We're going to have a bit of a read through the ebook. So this one's called the Wishing Fish, and it's actually one that I think um, I've heard of as well. So I want you to pause the video. Just have a read of that fable. All right, let's read the fable together now. So I'll read. So, in fact, it's a bit long. It might be a bit too long for the video. So I'll just get you to read that by yourself, okay? Okay, so it's they're saying here, what do you think this story might be about? What features of a traditional story might this story contain? Okay, so we've read it. Now, I want you to follow these directions and I want you to write down in the spaces below some of the answers for these questions. So it says here, read the first page of the story. And then A says, does this story remind you of another traditional story you have read? If so, write the title of that story in the space below. Answer that question for me. Off you go. Now, it wants you to read page four. So I want you, oh, it wants you to read until page four, the end of page four. So have another free read over that, and then you're going to write in this box, what is the problem or complication in this story? So there's quite a bit of space. So I would actually start by saying, I use part of the question and the answer. You guys know how much I love that. The problem or complication in this story is and then finish that off for me, off you go. Now it wants you to do this. Write one sentence to describe the stepmother and how she makes you feel. So you could say, the stepmother makes me feel what? The stepmother makes me feel what? Off you go. Now, continue and read the whole rest of the story again. And D says, who were the main characters in the story? So again, the main characters in the story were, and then you can list them. Remember it says the key word there is main. So you're only talking about the, the ones that were that were quite, um, that the story was focused around. So go off and answer that question. Now this last one's always the tricky one. What was the moral or message being taught in this traditional story? Most fables and fairy tales do have a hidden moral or a message. So, for example, the... Um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears was um, was all about, I believe, not breaking into someone's house or something. I don't know. It's a long time since I've read them. And um, Little Red Riding Hood, uh, that was that was all about trust, wasn't it? Because the 
wolf dressed up as her grandmother. So all of these fairy tales have hidden morals or messages. So once you think about what the moral or message was in that traditional story. So you could write, the moral or message being taught in this traditional story was, finish that sentence, off you go. All right. There's another video there that we don't really need to watch. But I might just... No, it's not going to come up anyway, so that's all good. So we're not too worried about that video. The next thing you need to do is open this sheet, which has sheet four on the top and is titled A Chinese Traditional Story. So it's the same one you just read. Now these here, these are the main characters. So check that you listed all of these people, the king, the stepmother, and Yi Zing, or Li Zian, as the main characters. And it says here, list two words to describe each of the three main characters in this story in the space below. So notice how it says list. So does Mr. G expect you to write in sentences in that tiny little box? Absolutely not. So just a couple of words in each box that describe those people. Off you go. And now here it says, did the storyteller make you like this character? So the author always portrays the characters in a certain way. They want you to like certain characters and dislike certain characters. So for each of those, tick yes or no. Now the next one is human qualities. So this is this is the chomp strategy. So it's got, as you can see, characters, human qualities, old and oral, moral or message, purpose. So we're up to the H, human qualities. So again, write two human qualities that the characters in this story have. Okay? So human qualities could be loyalty, greed, respect, uh, kindness, anger. Those are attributes that humans have. So what were two that came to your mind? List them there for me. Off you go. Next one is the O, old and oral. So a lot of these stories are actually retold orally. They're not written. So it's similar to traditional Dreamtime stories um, in our culture. So a lot of those stories are passed down orally. They're not actually written down. And a lot of these, you, you got to think, you got to think outside the box with these as well because English is very much a written language. But those old languages like Chinese, Latin, uh, those a lot of the Aboriginal traditional languages, they were all oral languages. They weren't written languages. So it's very different the way in which they communicate and tell a story to how British um, colonial Europeans tell a story, isn't it? So that's just pointing out that the story was was originally retold orally. So when it gets retold, that's where the concept of Chinese whispers comes from. So when things get retold orally, each time someone tells the story, they put a different spin on it or they tell it in a different way. So often it changes from here all the way to here, doesn't it? So who knows what the first ever um, wishing fish story was actually like. Now we're up to the M. Moral or message? What is the moral or message of the story? So you thought about that before, didn't you? So again, you'll have to write the moral or message of this story is 
and and um, rewrite that. You might have discovered a new moral or message as well. He, what is the purpose of the story? And they've already done it here for you to entertain. So it's a bit different from a recipe, which is to uh, inform us. It's different to a persuasive text, which is trying to persuade us. These texts are just simply trying to entertain us. They're trying to teach people a lesson um, and trying to do it in a way that we're going to engage with. And I forgot the S. We've got chomp. We've got to make it chomps. So this is the structure. So we've done a lot of work on text structure over the year, haven't we? And in particular with a story, like the twits, we've generally got orientation, complication, resolution. And in that complication, you've got lots of events. So what were some of the key events in the story that influenced the plot? Now, the plot is sort of like the umbrella of the whole structure. The plot is what the story is about, isn't it? So use the words below to complete the key events in the plot. So you've got a bank of words here, and then you've got some missing spaces here. So Yi Xian's father died, and she is raised by kills. Doesn't sound right. She is raised by magic. She is raised by forgives. She is raised by her evil stepmother. She is raised by the K Festival. She is raised by married. She is raised by a beautiful red fish. You choose the one that is correct and makes sense, okay? And then you write it in there. You have to do that for each of those. It's basically a close activity. And essentially, once you finish that worksheet, you are basically done. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to enjoy my holiday in China. I'm going to go do a walk along the Great Wall. And I'll see you later in maths. Bye now.